Good morning, and thank you for joining me on the Path to Liberty. This is the Fast Friday edition of the show for February 21st, 2020. Today, we're talking about facial recognition surveillance, how it's virtually impossible to conduct this kind of spying under a standard of a warrant based on probable cause. So that's going to be the introduction. And then I want to cover and share with you all the latest reports on efforts in the states and local communities to put this kind of mass, warrantless, unconstitutional surveillance to an end. First of all, my name is Michael Bolden. We broadcast live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time from here in my home office and studio in downtown Los Angeles for the 10th Amendment Center. You can find all the platforms we're on, whether it's video or audio only podcast edition, all of our archives, show notes, ways to follow us, ways to support us, like our membership program for as little as two bucks a month. It goes a long, long way, let me tell you that. You find all that information over at 10th Amendment Center.com slash path to liberty, all spelled out. Again, 10th Amendment Center.com slash path path to liberty. I'm really grateful for you spending some time with me today, but I promise since it's Fast Friday to not take up too much of your time, let's see if I can get this done in the next 10 to 15 minutes. First of all, to start out, the text of the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution for the United States reads like this. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. Now, keep that in mind as I read through this next section here from an article from Mike Meharry a few years ago covering how local, state, and federal governments are all partnering together to build a massive facial recognition surveillance system. He puts it this way. As you walk down a city street, you pass by a camera inconspicuously perched on top of a utility pole. Instantly, now mind you, they could be on drones, they could be on cop cars, they'd be all over the place too. Instantly, the device captures an image of your face and runs it against a database containing millions of photos. And we've learned since then that the technology does not require the camera to have this capability. They can actually upgrade systems through software to allow them to utilize old school security cameras as long as they're feeding it through the internet and sending it to some server, some database, they can do the matching system elsewhere. Within seconds, and maybe that's even too long, Mike writes, the system identifies you and logs your location. Should your name be flagged for any reason, or perhaps you resemble a miscreant, police immediately descend on you and haul you away. Now, that's just one example how that's used. And of course, we know that at least as of now, for many people, primarily persons of color, the accuracy of these things is dangerously not good. So misidentifying people is a serious problem. But even worse than that, it is going to affect everyone. It doesn't matter your background, your political beliefs, your religious beliefs, your race, your gender, any of this, because what happens, it is, they don't care. It's, it's going to be easy for them, and they're already doing this, to build a total database, a profile on everyone based on where they're going, who they're spending time with, what type of events they attend, where they shop, what type of church they don't go to or go to, what type of rallies they go to, and on and on and on. And I don't think it takes a lot of imagination to guess how some nefarious people on whatever side of the political spectrum are being nefarious. And to me, that's all of it when it comes to Washington, D.C., and in most governments as well. It doesn't take a lot of imagination to think of how they might use this against every human being on earth. And uh, Meharry put it this way. He said, this may sound like a scenario of a George Orwell novel, but law enforcement agencies across the U.S. have already developed these kinds of surveillance systems and facial recognition technology continues to proliferate rapidly. This was back in 2016. We had only been covering this for maybe a couple of short years at that point. And I think it's expanded even more rapidly in the last three and a half years since then. Now, mind you, this is searching someone. It is seizing an image of their face. You're searching their face. You're searching their person. You're seizing it. They're keeping a copy of the image of your face in a database. They're sharing that information. They're building profiles. They're sharing it with state, local, 
law enforcement agencies, agencies around the country, and the federal government through programs like ISE, Information Sharing Environment, and Fusion Centers. Now, it's not just the federal constitution which is at issue here, which is being violated. Almost every state has a provision very similar to this. For example, here in Texas, Section 9, I believe, of the Texas Bill of Rights, Searches and seizures, the people shall be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and possessions from all unreasonable seizures or searches, and no warrant to search any place or to seize any person or thing shall issue without describing them as near as may be nor without probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation. Or the Massachusetts Constitution, for example, Article 14, very similar, kind of some old school language. I'm not going to read through it. I will include a link to that in the show notes as a reference. Basically, most states also include this. And when we're talking about state and local level facial recognition surveillance, the feds do this as well. The TSA is really ramping this up. The SS, the Secret Service, is implementing this as many places as they can. But because they're sharing it, it's just it's not just a clear cut issue of either being a state constitutional violation or a federal one because they're all acting like one giant federal surveillance force, one giant blob. It's not a federal structure at all. And with that in mind, I just want to reiterate, I believe it is impossible to do facial recognition surveillance by perching up a camera and just grabbing everyone walking by and scanning them under this type of a standard. It's just absolutely impossible. And with that in mind, what should be done about it? states and localities? Because the federal government can never be trusted to do this. And if they tell everybody to stop it, you know someone in the future is going to flip that around in a really bad way anyways. States and local governments should take steps to stop this type of surveillance right now before it gets crazy out of hand. And we've got some good news to cover on this today. For example, in New Hampshire just a couple of days ago, House Bill 1642 passed the state house, at least an initial vote there. And here from the legislation, quote, neither the state nor any state official shall obtain, retain access or use any face surveillance system or any information obtained from a face surveillance system. So they won't even be able to accept data transferred to them from the FBI or from other states through the fusion centers or information sharing environments should this become law. That had already passed out of committee by a vote of 18 to 2, but everything gets a vote on the House floor. That passed a couple of days ago by a voice voice vote. And for some technical reasons, it's going to the House Judiciary Committee, where we expect a hearing on that in the next couple of weeks. And there will be one final vote in the House after that, should it pass out of judiciary. We'll just see. Not sure. Sometimes they may mess with it, and we'll see what happens. But as at this point, this is an incredibly good bill to ban the use of facial recognition in New Hampshire, and it's been passing by easy numbers so far. In Washington state also this week, Senate bill, not House bill, Senate bill 6280 would require, it doesn't fully ban facial recognition, but it would require a warrant for any ongoing facial recognition surveillance, basically the examples that I've been showing. And I don't think you can actually get warrants that cover that properly. So I think this is really going to put government in a very tight corner in Washington state should it become law. It did pass the state Senate this week by a vote of 30 to 18, 30 to 18, pretty easy. But guess who all the no votes were? Surprise, surprise. It was primarily party lines. 17 Republicans voted no. 17 of the 18 no votes were Republicans. There were only two yes votes from the Republican side. This is really bad on the police state, but at least it's still passed there. Going further from uh, Mike Meharry's report, the proposed law also bans the use of facial recognition solely based on an individual's religious, political, or social views or activities. Participation in a particular non-criminal organization or lawful event or actual or perceived race, ethnicity, citizenship, place of origin, age, disability, gender, gender identity, sexual orientation or other characteristic pr protected by law. I mean, I think they don't even need to say that. Uh, but it really kind of hammers it home that they're just not going to be doing this type. So they won't even authorize, I guess, a warrant uh, for any of those reasons specifically. That passed out of the Senate, the state Senate, by a vote of 30 to 18. And we'll be following that as it goes through the process. Next up in Idaho, a similar bill, House 492, 
take some strong steps to stop or slow down this type of facial recognition surveillance in that state. House Bill 492 was up for a hearing yesterday. I haven't checked yet to see how it did, if it got a vote or not. Uh, but we haven't seen anything negative so far. But House Bill 492 is a very similar one to the Washington State Bill that had a hearing yesterday. And then in New York State, there's a bill or two bills now introduced in New York State that fully ban police use of facial recognition and other biometric surveillance technologies. This is Assembly Bill 9767 and Senate Bill 7572. It would ban any police in the state from possessing, accessing, installing, activating, or using any biometric surveillance system or using any data uh, derived from anything similar to that. That's New York State. In Massachusetts, there's two bills, Senate Bill 1385 and House Bill 1538. That's kind of interesting. Both of them create a moratorium, basically saying no one's going to use facial recognition until the legislature goes and positively authorizes it at a future time. I don't necessarily like that because I don't trust the legislature there in Massachusetts or anywhere, but shutting it down at least temporarily would be a positive step forward. It has had some hearings. It's a long process there in Massachusetts, and we'll be keeping up to that. I believe sometime in early May is when we expect the next ap action in Massachusetts. And then kind of a very small first step, Senate Bill 116 is up for consideration in New Jersey. A bill in South Carolina, House Bill 4709 from Representatives Leon Stavronakis, I apologize if I got that wrong, and Todd Rutherford, would prohibit police from installing, activating, or using any biometric surveillance system, including facial recognition, on an officer body camera or any information collected by an officer's body camera. Now, we know... For example, that a similar bill was passed here into law in California, even just a temporary three-year ban, Assembly Bill 1215 went into effect in January. And what this had the result of doing was it shut down the largest local facial recognition system in the country. San Diego totally closed theirs off. I covered this recently. Uh, but they shut it down because it's connected to all basic police body cams, police handheld systems, et cetera. So they've closed that down as of the beginning of this year. There's a lot of work to do in California to make this permanent. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to pull this off, but at least gets a foot in the door for privacy and for liberty. That's in San Diego and here in California. And then talking about San Diego and localities, there are now at least currently, there are seven localities around the country that have had a total ban or have implemented or passed a total ban on government use of facial recognition technology, all in Massachusetts and here in California. In Massachusetts, there's four localities, Cambridge, Northampton, Brookline, and Somerville, all have passed bans. And then here in California, San Francisco, Oakland, and Berkeley. Don't expect that in Los Angeles or San Diego. Well, San Diego, they've shut theirs down, but they haven't passed a ban. They're only shutting it down because they're worried about coming into conflict with the state law. So there's got to, again, there's a lot of work that has to be done to make that permanent. And then in Denver, activists in Denver, we reported a couple of months ago, are working to get a complete ban on facial recognition by government on the ballot in 2020. So they're doing a signature collection. They've been improved to do this already. They've gone through the whole process. They're in the signature collecting phase. They have until May 4th to collect 8,265 valid signatures. Uh, it's the 5280. I think it's initiative 5280, not 1984 initiative. 5280, not 1984, ban facial recognition surveillance in Denver. I'm not sure how far along they are on covering this, on getting the signatures, but I will include a link in the show notes that anybody who lives in Denver or anywhere that knows people who lives in Denver, please pass that link along and hopefully we can get people to sign up in support and get that on the ballot. Well, I hope you guys, that's a mouthful. I hope you guys found this interesting. I hope you found it educational. We're making some progress. We're going to continue to chip away inch by inch, step by step, brick by brick for liberty on this and so many other issues. And of course, if you support our work, if you consume this content that I put out here regularly, I continue and I will continue doing this for free for everyone. It would mean the absolute world to me if you haven't already done so 
to consider a membership for as little as two bucks a month. That's over at 10thamendmentcenter.com slash members. If you're not able to do that, of course, some free things that you can do, smash the like button, leave a review on whatever podcast platform you're on, subscribe, share links, and on and on. 10thamendmentcenter.com slash members is where you sign up. And of course, whatever platform you're on, you can leave reviews, comments, likes, and all that other stuff. Thanks again for watching. Thanks again for listening. I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great weekend. And I'll see you next week here on the Path to Liberty.